fishyacker.com the original kayak rigging video series hey guys it's john oost from fishyacker.com again how do you connect your lure your hook whatever you're fishing with your actual line your fishing rod a lot of us use different types of clips some tie directly some use a combination of the two Personally, I've kind of come full circle. Like a lot, when I was a kid, I used to soak a lot of bait. I used a lot of bottom rigs, especially saltwater fishing growing up in Virginia. I had, uh, typically on my end of my line, I stored them with a, a snap swivel, okay? With a barrel swivel on the top of it. That way I had one, one knot on my line. I always had it on there. I could always change it on and off or, you know, I got off the water. I just had the snap on there. I could take the bottom rig off, sort of rod, and kind of forget about it. Well, they do serve a good purpose for that. But think about it. They, they, not all snaps are created equal. I have here in front of me just a handful of different types. Some, like I mentioned before, have a swivel connected to it. Some do not. Uh, there are a couple different types I have here in front of me. Like I said, they serve different purposes. Think about it. What type of lure are you working? For instance, if you're using a, a jig, let's say you're working a jig or a jigging spoon, you want to have it directly tied to your line. In some cases, depending on how you're working it or if you're changing lures constantly, you may want to use a clip, but typically when you're using a jig, you're jigging or using a spoon, something you're bouncing off the bottom, it's really good to tie it directly to your line. Why? Well, think about it. You're tying it directly to the line, you're going to have immediate touch. You're going to feel that lure a whole lot more. If you have it on a clip, it's going to be sliding around in the clip a little bit. And if you have a strike, you're going to have instantaneous you know, control over it when you're setting the hook if it's tied directly to the line. But if you're using a clip, it's going to have a little bit more play in it. What if a fish starts to pick it up just a little subtly, just a little tiny bit? If you have a clip on it, you might not feel it. So in some cases, a clip's not very beneficial. But certain lures, it really is. For instance, when would you use one that doesn't have a swivel or one that may have a swivel? What kind of lure are you using? Are you using an inline spinner? If you do, a lot of those spinners will kind of have a tendency to spin themselves. Or do you have a lure that simple, simply has a tendency to spin? Or do you get a lot of line twist depending on what type of you know reel you're using, what type of lure you're using? In those cases, a swivel clip comes in really handily because obviously you can quickly attach and detach that lure because you have a clip on it, but also with the barrel swivel on it, any type of spin that's imparted by the lure isn't going to twist your line up and that lure is going to be able to spin freely if it needs to or actually could cause lure not to spin as much as it normally would otherwise, which would have more of a natural action like the lure is designed to have. So in that case, a swivel clip is really beneficial. but Again, in some cases, it's still better to tie directly to the lure and then go have a leader material go up, say, a foot or two, whatever it may be, and then just simply put a barrel swivel on it without a clip. Your, your call, you need to kind of play with the lures and kind of experiment with it, see which one works best. But again, if you have a lure that has a tendency or is even designed to spin, a barrel swivel, come, a barrel swivel clip like this comes in really handy. What about crankbaits? If I'm throwing a lot of crankbaits, and especially if I'm changing them in and out, a small standard clip really does work. This is great, and you can use it in combination to a split ring. If you don't have a split ring already on your crankbait, what I do, I automatically put a, a, a split ring on it, and then I can connect it directly to this. Again, you're not going to have as much feel in the lure, but you're going to be constantly cranking it anyway, so you're going to have direct contact on it. You're not going to have much slack in your line typically anyway, okay, unless you're, you know, you're using jerk bait. In some way, cases, you may have it sit. But in general, if you're using crank baits, a clip comes in really handy. You can change them in and out. What is the big problem with using clips? Well, how many fish have you caught on that line? How many times have you been on the water and you've had the same clip on your line and you may have gone out and used that same rod over and over for several weeks straight and how many times have you checked that knot? That's probably the biggest problem with using a clip. If you have a clip on your line 
and you have it tied on with a knot and you haven't checked that knot or retied that knot in several outings, think about it, it could really be problematic. It could have bite marks if you have a toothy critter that you've been landing, or it simply could be snagged or, or have a little bit of fraying on the line, or the knot could simply be coming loose or getting ready to break itself. So if you're using clips and snaps, be sure to regularly when you're on the water, multiple times during the day even, check that knot and retie it. But you really kind of need to experiment. It's kind of hard to say use this for, with a clip or don't use this with a clip. But kind of the rule of thumb, if you're using jigs, jigging spoons, things like that, you probably want to tie directly to the line and not use a clip. If you're using crank baits, uh, working lures, say like that, you can use a clip. Now also, you got to think if you're using a clip, try to get one that has a curved bottom on it. If you're using a crank bait, because it'll actually, in many cases, can actually add action to the lure. And then you got to think, are you using a, a, a lure that has a spinning action to it, like an inline spinner? Or if you're, or a, you know, uh, uh, if you're just simply uh, pulling in a spoon, you're not jigging a spoon, you know, if you're working a spoon. In that case there, again, those cases you're probably going to want a, sw a swivel clip, you know, itself, because that way you're not going to get line twist, and your lure might work more properly. But kind of play around with them. Like I said, I've kind of come full circle. I grew up using them just because I was basically a lazy kid, and I just didn't want to have to tie knots all the time. Then I, st I thought to myself when I was getting older, getting more hardcore into fishing, I started tying everything myself. Like, oh, I don't, I, I need to always have a knot on it. I need to have it retied constantly. I need to always make sure the knot's in good condition. So I kind of went away from using clips. And now, like I said, I've kind of come full circle, come full, all the way back around. And now sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. But a lot of it depends on how I'm working a lure and what type of lure it is. Uh, they really do come in handy. They can keep you from having to tie knots over and over again all down the water. You can change out your lures really quickly, but remember, they can be problematic, and a lot of times they can mess up the action of a lure, but then again, if you're using certain crankbaits and things like that, they can actually add action to your lure. So experiment with them, get on the water with them, try out a few different styles and options, but no matter what, if you're using a clip, be sure to regularly check that knot. Okay, that's the big thing. If you don't take nothing away from this video, make sure you know to always check your knots if you're using a clip. As always, please be sure to subscribe to the Fish Yacker YouTube channel. Like us on Facebook. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the water.